Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to discuss about two DAX functions that is eDate and eOMonth. So I am going to show you how these two DAX functions work and what is the difference between these two functions. I'm going to show you in the DAX query view. I will type evaluate and I will take a variable. Uh, basically, I will take a sample date. And uh, let's take this date as 2024-0205, let's say. So I've taken a sample date and uh, I'm going to show you how does eDate works. So if I type eDate, so in the start date, I will give this sample date and uh, I will say minus one. So what do you think this function is going to return? So eDate function, you can uh, imagine it as a billing date or a subscription end date. Suppose you have taken a Netflix subscription on 5th of February 2024, okay? So this is the sample date, you have taken the sub Netflix subscription on this day. So what should be the next billing date if you have taken a monthly subscription? Uh, it will be 5th March 2024, right? So I will say here as 1. So 1 basically means next month, 0 means present month and minus 1 means last month. So here I have given 1. So E date of this sample date and 1, it will give the next billing date. The date it should return is 5th of March 2024 so it basically does not change the year it does not change the day it just changes the month this should give me the error because it's a single value it's a scalar value and uh, dax query view returns only the table value so what i will do is i will add a table constructor with this curly braces now this is a table value let's return this so it will give me see 5th march 2024 if I say you have taken two month subscription, so it should now return 5th of April 2024. If I say run, see 5th of April 2024. So it works like a billing date. Similarly, if I say minus one, it will give me the previous billing date. It will be giving me 5th of January 2024. See. So now let's see what EO month does. So I'll copy this code. I will paste it below. And everything remains same and uh, instead of e date, I will say EO month. What do you think this will return? So EO month basically gives the last date of the month specified. Irrespective of the date, for that month, it will give you the last date. So whatever interval you have mentioned, it will go back to, the, to that month and it will return the last date of that month. So here we have mentioned 5th February 2024 and we have provided the interval as minus one. So it will go to previous month, that is January, to give us the end date of January. So let's see, if I execute this, it will give me 31st Jan 2024. Here, if I say interval as zero, zero means current month. So it is going to give me the end date of the current month, which is 29 February 2024. So this is how your month is used. So this is the difference. So e date will give you the exact date of the next month or previous month, whatever the interval is specified. And EO month is going to give you the last date of the month, irrespective of the day of the month. So now I'm going to ask a question from e date and try to answer this in the comment section. And I'm going to answer it in the comment section. So let's take the sample date as 31st Jan 2024. And I will, I will mention the interval as one. So what do you think this function will return? Try to answer this in the comment. I'm going to clarify that itself. So I hope you have learned something new in this video. I'm going to continue adding this DAX series. I hope you found this video useful. So till then, goodbye. Thanks for watching.